and she represents the northern side of town from Midtown all the way up to the foothills. And so if you don't know that area very well, she represents an area that has everything from poor trailer courts to mansions in the foothills. And so those disparities are very present in the area that she represents. And she wants to talk about how we get more equality and equity in our communities. And I would like to present to you all Pam Powers Handley. Like he says, I, I uh, represent LD9 in Tucson, uh, which has uh, about the same ethnic uh, d diversity as the whole state. It's not a my majority minority district as you have down here on the south side, but it has tremendous economic diversity. We have uh, people living in uh, trailer parks that haven't seen code enforcement in decades, and we have people living in McMansions up at Sabino Canyon. So. Uh, you all might know me as a legislator, but some of you who have known me for a long time know that I've been a political blogger at Block for Arizona for uh, more than 10 years now. And so gentrification, Rio Nuevo, incentivizing development with tax giveaways, these have been topics that I've been studying and writing about for more than 10 years. So it didn't just start when I started at the legislature. And in fact, some things became more apparent when I got up there and some things became even scarier. So. <laughs> During that 10 year time frame, the other thing that I was also advocating for was public banking. And so Michael Peel knows about public banking. This is a way to use uh, for the state or the city to self-fund infrastructure or schools or to help people with uh, uh, student debt or something like that and not do giveaways. And so when I ran for office, I said that public banking should be the way that we spur economic development rather than tax giveaways. And I still believe that that's the best way to do it. That's the way to sustainable economic development. And the problem with public banking in the state of Arizona is that you have to trust the government, right? How many of you trust the legislature? I don't trust the legislature and I'm up there, right? And so, so anyway, so where does that leave us? Where it leaves us is where we are right now, where economic development, the main go-to thing is to give tax breaks to mostly large corporations, but also to developers. Uh, but it's not really helping you all. It's not helping me. It's not helping my constituents that much. So as a blogger, I theorized that there were multiple layers of tax breaks going on downtown. And what I found out was that I was right, right? Uh, do you ever, any of you remember when Molly McCaffson ran against Bob Walkup for mayor? That was 1999, it was a long time ago. But one of the things that she said after she lost, she was, she was successfully painted as an old hippie chick who wasn't ready to lead and that Bob Walkup had been uh, an executive at Raytheon and he was gonna run to some like a business. And so, you know, he won, she lost. And when uh, she was interviewed, she said, it's too bad that Tucson has chosen to put all of our eggs in the developer's basket. She said that 20 years ago, and she was absolutely right, right? Because that's what we see downtown. And so uh, she was spot on, like I say. And so what we have downtown is gleaming buildings and politicians, not me, other politicians say, look, it's successful. Look how pretty the buildings are, right? And they are very pretty. I do remember uh, Tucson before the buildings. I've been here since 1981. So uh, I was right. There were layers of tax breaks going on. So in addition to the, the GPLET, there are multiple layers of tax breaks that uh, a developer or a corporation can get not only from the local government and the county government, but the state government and the federal government. And sometimes these things are stacked on top of each other. And the problem is, the big challenge is, even through somebody like me, right? I'm in the legislature, I've been in finance and management, I'm on the Ways and Means Committee, and it's even difficult for me to figure out who's getting the money, how much they're getting, whether or not it's being appropriately spent, and what the rest of us are getting out of it, right? So we, I wanna know, was there a wise use of funds? That's what I'm always looking at. My, truth be told, my parents were Republicans, but they were fiscal conservatives and social progressives, and that's what I consider myself. I consider us a, 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 a fiscal conservative. I'm a show me, don't tell me person, right? I don't want you to say, look at the beautiful billion, billion buildings, that means everything is great. 
I want you to show me the spreadsheet, right? I'm a right spreadsheet on. person. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So at the local level, you know, the city collects the sales tax, the county does the property tax, the state does corporate and, uh, and uh, personal income tax and lots of fees. And so all those fees and taxes are collected, they're put together, they have shared agreements on how these taxes are spent, and so some things come back to us and some things don't come back to us. And so uh, the, the state brings in millions of dollars and it's supposed to be sharing it with the city. Now that doesn't necessarily happen. So why are education and roads underfunded when we have all these tax dollars? That's because too much of the money is being given away. Too much of it is being diverted from the original intent or purpose. And you know, for example, infamously, right, the state legislature for many years has swept the highway funds. That's why the roads are so bad, because they've taken that money. And when I got up there, that was like the big rallying cry. We gotta, we gotta restore the HERF funding, restore the highway funds. Well, what I found out when I got up there was that they took the highway funds to pay for the Department of Public Safety. And I'm like, we're not funding the Department of Public Safety, you know? <laughs> so, but no, there was there's a shell game with this thing. And so what you see is that because funds are diverted, that there are programs that are, programs that are not, um, not funded properly. So that brings us to the giplet, also known as the giplet, or the giblet in Phoenix with a B, I'm not sure why. And so uh, we had a really good demonstration of what that's like. Basically, it's a deal with the city and the developer that while they're improving the property, they're not gonna be paying increased property taxes they're gonna be paying a sales tax instead. So they're paying significantly less money. The idea is while they're spending all this money to build the buildings, that they're gonna have a reduced tax rate. Uh, initially, the G plants, when they were first started in the 1990s, were forever. So those developers never paid full property tax. There are, according to my Republican colleagues, many Phoenix uh, uh, places downtown that will never pay the full property tax, even though it's a gleaming tower they're not paying the property tax, and that hurts the schools. Uh, Tucson didn't jump, in, jump into the GPLEDs until later. Uh, in 2011, uh, the GPLEDs were reduced from forever to 25 years, and then more recently down to eight years. And so the upshot is there's not enough tax being collected. So who tipped me off to all of this? Now sometimes I think scenes that happen to me in the legislature should be part of a movie someday, right? And so let's look at 2017, I was a brand new legislature. Uh, we get invited to a lot of parties, right? So I was at the Arizona Electric Power Cooperative uh, Legislative Roundup at the Rustler's Roost in Phoenix. Rustler's Roost is this giant cowboy bar, right? So the music's playing and people are talking and the picture me over at the side and who and I'm talking to? Vince Leach from LD11, right? Not necessarily somebody you'd see me palling around with at a bar, right? And so. I'm there with Vince Leach and John Kai, who is a big developer up in Miranda, and Vince, Vince Leach, two things we have in common, he doesn't like real way when he doesn't like giplets. So he's like, well, I don't like the giplets because they're stealing money from the schools. And I said, what? You know, he's the one who tipped me off. You know, and once the progressives started talking about these tax, wave, tax giveaways taking money from the schools, that's what woke up red for it. They're like, wait a minute. When they don't pay property tax, we don't get the money in the schools. Exactly right. And so, Leach and I actually worked together, uh, which not all the Democrats like that, we worked together to reduce that Jeep lift from 25 years to eight years, and I still think that was a good move. Because it's not that we want to get rid of it, but it could be less generous. And when those ones in downtown Phoenix that are not paying the right tax forever, that's just not good. That harkens back to what the priest was just telling us. We should be fighting for the people in need. And so, uh, the tax, like I said, tax giveaways are uh, uh, present with interesting bedfellows in the legislature because this, these are not party line votes when we pass these tax breaks. There are progressives on one end, libertarians on the other, libertarians like my parents, right? Fiscal conservatives, they don't want to give money away. They want their taxes spent wisely. So you have libertarians and progressives often voting no for different reasons, right? And then you have what I call the corporate center, the chamber of commerce folks in the middle, Democrats and Republicans voting yes. And so uh, some of you might have heard me talk about this group called the Arizona Tax Research Association, also known as ATRA. 
So ATRA, when I write about them, I call them the libertarian tax hawks. Remember my parents, right? And so ATRA, they don't like the giplets and they don't like Rio Nuevo either, right? And so I was the only Democrat that went to the ATRA conference in the fall. And from the podium, Kevin McCarthy, who's the president of ATRA and a long-term tax hawk, he stands up there and he says, ATRA isn't against taxes. We want the taxes to be fair. And he says, we, don't, we want to stop the cities from giving all of their money away. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> hallelujah. And here's a guy that I'm not supposed to agree with, but I fully agree with him. The other thing that he said was that, so what ATRA doesn't like, they don't like the corporate giveaways. They're not against all giveaways, but they don't like the corporate ones. And if you look at what the uh, legislature is doing right now, we are poised to give away a billion dollars in new taxes year, every year going on, starting this next fiscal year. And as far as I'm concerned, that is not just fiscally irresponsible, that's insanity, right? Because you add what the state wants to give away on top of the g pets that the city has given away, and you know, we're, we're on shaky ground as far as I'm concerned. And I think it's, it's blatantly unfair, it's blatantly unfair that we are incentivizing high-rise expensive apartments in Tucson and in Phoenix, and what is that doing? Just as we said earlier, it's pushing the poor people out. Yeah. And so, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. hallelujah, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, if, if, you look at, uh, if you look at the records online, Phoenix has more g than anybody else, and like I said, some of those are the really bad ones that, where they'll never pay full ride of taxes. But if you, uh, Mesa and Tempe, and Tucson slash Pima County, they also have their fair share. And you know, for all the complaining we do in Tucson about we don't want to be like Tempe, we are following them down that path, right? And so uh, let's look at what, what's happening with uh, the Maloney's property, right? right? They were supposed to have a community benefits agreement, as Michael Peel said, down on that first floor so they could preserve the local businesses. But once they got the deal signed, they said, oh, I don't think we can do that, you know? And so it was like a bait and switch. So I looked at the records online. First of all, they're not terribly transparent, right? It's really hard to tell who's getting what and how much they got and what the promises are supposed to be. So except for the Jeep but for the Wildcat house, right? And the ones for the Mr. Car Wash, I didn't know we had Jeep plans for Mr. Car Wash, except that I did notice that there were a bunch of them popping up. So except for those, all the G-plets that we have on the city site are in, basically in Rio Nuevo. And now this is something that ATRA told me also. They said, everybody who gets a Rio Nuevo deal gets a giplet or just a sales tax deal too. And they were right, there it is, right there on the city, city uh, website. The other thing is that a lot of these places also get money from the Arizona Commerce Authority. So that's three levels of tax giveaways, city, state, and the, the G plan. And so, uh, I, you know, I don't think that we, I don't think we can afford this, right? So we, the taxpayers, we have the right to know how much incentives are being given to Worldview, Vector Lodge, Hex, Hexagon Mining, Caterpillar, Amazon, Home Goods, and the others. How many of them has, have created real jobs? Those hotels that got incentivized downtown, those are maid and waitress jobs. Those are not full-time jobs. Those are not jobs that are going to pay you a living wage so you can afford those expensive apartment buildings. So, so where does this leave us, right? I hate to be the harbinger of bad news, but I think the state and the city of Arizona are on shaky ground given that a lot of these things go over time, they're stacked up on top of each other. So, you know, if the G-Pets are good at two, two, uh, I almost said two minutes. <laughs> If they're, they're going on to the future and the, the tax giveaways from the state are going on to the, in the future, as far as I'm concerned, we're going to hit a fiscal cliff. And some of these things increase dramatically. Like, for example, the, uh, the, we have Doug Ducey, right? Doug Ducey and the legislature, they're saying, we have a budget surplus, we have a rosy economy, but let's do a little bit of reality check before we give away that billion dollars. Arizona's public education system has been underfunded for decades, right? Yeah. 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 Arizona is the worst in the nation for adverse childhood experiences. This is like food insecurity and housing insecurity. This is supposed to be one of Governor Ducey's priorities. How many bills do we have in the legislature for that this year? Zero. Zero bills. 18 tax giveaways, zero for adverse childhood experience. How much money appropriated? Zero. 
We also have too many moms and babies who don't have health care, too many premature brewers. We have large swaths of rural Arizona with considered health deserts because there's no health care out there. Six percent of Arizonans who actually qualify for cash assistance to the poor actually get it. Eighty-five percent, our, our wages in Arizona are eighty-five percent of the national average. And so we have chronically low wages. So professionals don't want to come here, right? We have shortages of teachers, doctors, and nurses. So we don't have a budget surplus. I have a little more, more of my speech, but I'm going to put the whole thing online at Blog for Arizona. John's told me I have to get off the stage. But anyway, watch what's going on up in Phoenix. Watch what's going on down in the city council and ask to see the spreadsheet. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Pam. One more round of applause. Peace out.